the thing was, you have to learn English. That's the way you mainstream. But the problem was that many of these people didn't have transportation. The women stayed at home with the children and didn't have a way to get to English lessons. Women were subjected to a lot of abuse from men because they didn't have the education, didn't know the language. So they were totally under the control of the man for everything. And I exposed those issues. I was raised in La Paz, Bolivia, in, in a very traditional household. The father was machista. The father was the ruler of the house, and my mother had to submit to my father because he was the sole provider. My mother rebelled against that from early on. She used to read a lot, and that inspired me. My mother, from early on, said, you girls, you have to go to college. You have to get educated so you wouldn't have to depend on your husbands like me. And that was, for me, I think, the inspiration of what I've done throughout my life. Search to be better, have a career, go to school, and not having to depend on a man for my livelihood. I look for a job in newspapers, but I didn't get anything because my credentials were overseas. And I understood that. Somebody suggested, why don't you invent yourself a job? And I did, and that's when I started Kipasa. The articles in that magazine were mainly to help Hispanics arriving how to mainstream into this culture. But the magazine was also a catalyst for several organizations to start. And then we started pushing for equal employment for Hispanics back then. That was the first Spanish language publication in Lee County with 10,000 copies and uh, being distributed all the way to Bradenton. I met my husband in Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic, uh, Joe Hill. He was a U.S. diplomat. I was working for the Chase Manhattan Bank and going to school, finish economics. We got married in Santo Domingo with his kids, my kids, and then later we had our own kid. That was our family. It wasn't very difficult to, uh, to juggle between housekeeping and job. I always found the time to do both my job and housework. It's not like they're mutually exclusive. I think you can't have both. The news press did uh, several stories on me, on Capasa, on uh, the new Hispanic community and uh, my involvement in the Hispanic community, some of the leadership. And so I developed a relationship with the news press. So when I closed the magazine in July, they called me up. I said, I'm free. They said, okay, come on over. <laughs> I don't think they had a Hispanic reporter up until then. And so I came to the paper and I did stories on diversity on the different communities and any issues related to the new population arriving in Lee County. Those were the early 90s. The news press was very much into uh, diversity, what then was called multiculturalism. I had a column for many years. In my column, I took the issues of immigration, international relations, uh, social issues, um, minority issues, women issues.
1999, my husband passed away with uh, lung cancer and left Joey and me, Joey, with 14 years old. In some of the columns that I wrote, talk about that grieving and coping and being a single mother. It was difficult, but writing about that was helpful and satisfying. The two things I see myself as contributing to Southwest Florida have to do with First Amendment rights. First, with Que Pasa. With I gave the Spanish-speaking community their free speech opportunity through that magazine. And that opened up a lot of doors. And then the First Amendment at the news press in making sure that the opinions of everyone are published in the paper.